Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lindsay Sharman. I am the curator of the Art Gallery of Alberta. I'm very happy to be introducing our event today, which is a conversation with members of the creative team behind Five Artists, One Love. Uh, 2021 is Five Artists, One Love's uh, 15th year of promoting the vibrancy of Edmonton's African-Canadian communities through art, music, spoken word, and performance. Uh, this is also the 10th year of hosting uh, art exhibitions at the AGA. So to mark those anniversaries, Five Artists, One Love has put together the exhibition called Black Every Day, which brings together 15 amazing visual artists. That exhibition is being installed right now um, at the Art Gallery of Alberta. And although we do unfortunately remain closed to the public, uh, that exhibition will be ready for you to visit uh, whenever health restrictions allow us to open again to the public. Um, so today we are hearing from uh, Darren Jordan, who is the founder, producer, and curator of Five Artists, One Love, uh, Natalie Mayer, who is the artistic director, and uh, their exhibition consultant, uh, Monique McFarlane. Um, Monique is joining us from Treaty 7 territory, um, and Darren, Natalie, myself, as well as the AGA are all situated on Treaty 6 territory. We're also in Edmonton. Um, this area is the traditional land of diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Inuit, and Ojibwe Solto Anishinaabe. I'd also like to acknowledge all of the Indigenous Inuit and Métis people uh, who make Edmonton and Alberta their home today. So for today, um, Darren, Natalie, and Monique are gonna talk for um, probably about 45 minutes, um, after which we're hoping to have some time for, for questions, um, should any come up. Um, so you will see a, a chat on your screen uh, where you can send in your questions. I'll be monitoring the chat throughout uh, the conversation, so you don't need to wait until the end uh, to ask your questions. You should just can just pop them in there whenever you like. Um, before I hand things over to um, Darren, Natalie, and uh, Monique, I'd like to thank EPCOR um, for their support. Um, all of our online programming at the AG is brought to you because of the generous support of the EPCOR Heart and Soul Fund. Um, Five Artists, One Love um, also receives a lot of support for the great work they do. Um, so their specific supporters are TD Bank Group, uh, Edmonton Community Fund, and Autism Edmonton. Um, so with that, um, I will hand it over to uh, Darren, Natalie, and Monique, and I'll, I'll invite them to, to come forward. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, hello, everyone. We got a good crowd here today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you ready? Sometimes you ready for this? Everybody ready for this? We're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Okay. A little nervous, but we can do this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it. Okay. Well, um, thank you, uh, Lindsay. I appreciate uh, appreciate the introduction. And, uh, and also we appreciate the acknowledgement that you, uh, you made for us being on Treaty 6 and Treaty 7. So um, uh, the question is, who are we? So we are the creative team of Five Arts, One Love. And uh, you're gonna have an opportunity to meet um, this part of the team, but I just want to acknowledge uh, some other people that also are involved uh, and that are a part, part or members of this team. So one is uh, Jeff Hendrick, who is our music director, uh, Melody Caesar who is our uh, chief operating officer, uh, Ziada Abdullah, and she's basically our volunteer coordinator. And uh, of course, my wife, Rosemary, who's a, a big supporter of me, and God knows I need it. Um, <laughs> and also we're gonna do a special shout out to Planet Sound today. Uh, they, they've been helping us with marketing and production, and um, they've taken this whole event to another level. Um, also wanna take an opportunity to just reiterate what, uh, what Lindsay said about our sponsors, we we could not do this without the support of the community, and we certainly couldn't do it without the support of our sponsors. So uh, again, TD Bank, uh, TD Bank Group, who's been uh, instrumental in uh, helping us elevate this uh, event, uh, the Edmonton Arts Council, 
uh, who've been involved with this over the last few years. Um, very supportive, very consistent. And the Edmonton Community Foundation also, uh, who have been with us uh, for the last uh, couple of years. Um, also want to give uh, a moment to say that uh, we mental health is a very important uh, topic for us, among other things. And so we have partnered with uh, the Edmonton, uh, Autism Edmonton uh, um, organization. And uh, going forward, every event that we have, we're always hoping that people uh, sort of raise their awareness uh, about autism and the uh, organization's work within the community. And uh, there's always an, an opportunity to uh, donate to that, uh, that charity. That's a charity that we've taken under our wing and is important to us. And uh, lastly, I just need to say a special thank you to the AGA, Catherine Croston and, uh, and Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Sharman and their team for all the, uh, the work and effort that they've done uh, with us. So uh, thank you very much. So let's do it. Okay, can I get into it? Absolutely. All right. Let's do this. Uh, so I just like to talk about Darren why Hoover. we're, <laughs> what? Yeah. Sure. You know who I am. Uh, okay. All right. My name is Darren W. Jordan, and I am the uh, I'm the founder and I'm the um, I guess producer of uh, of Five Artists One Love. And um, today we're gonna do we're gonna discuss a couple of things. We're gonna talk about the genesis of Five Artists One Love and what it is. Uh, we're gonna talk about um, the 15 year making of this uh, this new and exciting event at the AGA called Black Every Day. Um, and the importance of uh, holding space for black artists. And then we also, at the end of this, we wanna hear from all of you. So uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you again who I am. My name is Darren Jordan. As I said, I'm the, uh, the founder and producer of Five Arts One Love. I'm also the curator. And uh, here's a little bit about my background. Um, I love long walks on the beach. And uh, my, my father is Bajan and my mother is Jamaican. And I'm of British descent. So that makes me somewhat, I guess, complicated. So uh, I'm going to now introduce the rest of the team. Uh, Natalie, why don't you tell us about your role and who you are? Where, where are you from? What's your business? You bet. You bet. Well, my name is Natalie Meyer. I am the Artistic Director of Five Artists, One Love. Uh, this is my second year on board with this amazing team. He uh, asked me back to come a second year, which I'm very thankful for, Darren. Thank you. Glad to have you means I, I did an okay job last year. Um, so yeah, I've been around here for two years. I've been attending Five Artists One Love for approximately five, um, mostly just being part of the wall and, and sort of being like a, an audience member. Um, my we'll, we'll explain there, the wall later. That means something. Yes, you bet. Um, that was my way in. <laughs> into the show. So both of my parents actually are Dutch Indo. So I am an Indonesian uh, heritage. Um, I am also a visual artist, photographer, youth mentor, educator, videographer, body painter. So okay. I do a little bit with art. <laughs> and I think that's kind of my segue into becoming the artistic director is um, I'm mostly known for painting women of color and I am very heavily influenced by culture, uh, tradition, um, a lot of African and Caribbean um, heritage and culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really glad to be here and uh, I'm excited to tell you guys about the show. So on to Monique. Groovy. Okay, um, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Monique McFarlane. Um, if you don't know that, it's because I usually hide in the back. <laughs> I'm, I've been with Five Artists, One Love for around five years maybe missing a year in between, but around five years total. Um, I started with the group. Oh, wait, I should get back, like, more about me, I guess. Um, yeah. My cool. family is Jamaican, so I'm a Jamaican-Canadian. Um, mm -hmm. So me and Darren can commiserate over some really good soul food, some yes, tacky sure. and selfish sometimes <laughs> yeah. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. It's always fun. Um, I've been with them for uh, around, like I said, five years. Currently, I'm the exhibition consultant because um, Nellie has taken over the roles of artistic director. I was in that role for um, maybe four years. And then before that I was a volunteer and mm -hmm. I worked my way up, I guess, as they say, I grinded through. Mm -hmm. So- um, And you were amazing, kind of, amazing. Yeah. That's kind of where I stand. Um, I'm in the background. I'm helping with um, design review. 
and content review and exhibit details and graphics review. And then I help out with some online tasks whenever I'm available to do so. So I guess um, that leads us to our next section then. We're gonna talk to Darren and he's gonna give us some history on Five Artists, One Loves and it's Genesis. And you know, let's take a look at some photos over the years as we talk to Darren. Groovy. So full disclosure, I have a tendency to ramble. So I know that we have, uh, we've got this broken down to certain minutes. So if, um, if it looks like I'm going on, just cough or say, um, stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, so basically five artists, one love is, um, it, it's a how would I describe it? So it's, it's a cultural event that promotes, um, the, the vibrancy and the, and the range of Edmonton's African communities, African Canadian communities. And we do that through artistry and community engagement. Um, at its genesis, it was a art show. And um, we started that in 2006, in a very small, very modest um, gallery called the Two Gallery. And uh, basically over the X amount of years, so many years, I think about five years, uh, it grew and then we were invited to uh, to do the show at the uh, the art gallery of Alberta, um, it is not only a uh, cultural experience that will just edify your soul uh, in terms of the art, but there is an amazing uh, music production that is connected to this thing. And um, basically, we we started that to bankroll and pay for um, the art show, and it's basically moved on to have a life of itself. Uh, the reason why I started this was back then, um, I, when I looked around, I just didn't see a lot of representation of black artists. Uh, strangely enough, particularly during Black History Month. Uh, so I didn't see much in the way of galleries or any large or small. And so I felt that uh, there would be some benefit in stop my stopping complaining about it and try to get uh, something going. So a big thanks to a gentleman by the name uh, Alex uh, Patterson, who owned the gallery, who uh, gave us that first opportunity to do that. So that's basically what it is and why we're here. Okay, Darren. So when was like the first five artists one love? What exact date? Because I'm like, I guess I could just be like, it's 15 years later, but I don't uh, do math. What's the yeah, math? I don't know about the specific <laughs> date. February really 2006 at the <laughs> gallery. Um, is where that's when it, that's when it first started and. Um, you know, I tell you, when we first started it, I knew that uh, I'd seen other people do other shows or what have you, um, not necessarily from our community, but I wanted to actually make it feel like an, an event that when you walked in, you knew that there was a lot of thought in all the details. And I think that's one of the things that sort of has set us aside with a lot of other uh, similar events, particularly back then. But um, yeah, we're looking at yeah, 2006, I believe, is when we started. So. Okay, so Darren, we have a lot of events going on. Can you tell people what the events are in our calendar year, just like our general regular events so they know Indeed. where to find us kind of thing? Indeed. Normally. Indeed. Yeah, so uh, Black, Black History Month, that is where we have, uh, that's where we have been nestled and nurtured and that is where we, we started. This event was primarily set up as a Black History Month event. So um, for several years, we would always occupy the first Saturday of, uh, of February, Black History Month, the coldest, shortest month of the year. And uh, we did so um, with the idea that we would like to live outside of the confines of that particular date. So yes, we do, uh, we do uh, Five Artists, One Love, and we have actually consistently done it for Black History Month. Uh, but we have started to uh, spread out. Uh, we now have a show in September uh, for the last uh, probably about five, six years for Culture Days, where we do a uh, an art battle, an art show, art battle, music extravaganza. Um, and we have uh, we have goals of continuing to uh, spread out throughout the year. And as I said, just sort of break out of the confines of uh, of February. And uh, if I think this. Uh, I think the most significant move is this uh, this most recent um, art exhibit that we have, which is not in February. Uh, if all things go well and the, the restrictions allow, uh, by the uh, end of uh, March, we should be having something 
very special outside of Black History Month. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then, now that we're in like the so-called COVID reality, I hate saying that, um, what have we done so like, to pivot to pivot on this COVID thing? Because clearly people cannot come to our event right, right now. Yeah. Um, maybe in the future, who knows? But we've done things a little bit differently. We've had to pivot and, you know, what are the ingenious ways you've helped us to like, you know, address that issue? Good question. Like we threw an ingenious. Mm. So mm. we we cannot. Uh, we clearly we can't meet. Uh, we cannot meet as 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 uh, as a community as a cr in a crowd or anything like that. Um, and I'll tell you, shortly after that was uh, realized, people were were asking, "What are we going to do? What are how are you guys going to still do something special for for the time?" And so what we've done is we uh, developed a webisode. We we partnered with Planet Sound. Uh, again, an amazing production company. And what we wanted to do is tell a story about the genesis of Five Artists, One Love, what, how it started, where we're going. Uh, and we wanted to give them a sample of, of um, these infectious uh, performances that we normally do. And so we did a webisode, which was aired last night. Uh, it will live um, on, the, on the World Wide Web interwebs. Uh, it'll live on the internet on, um, in, on our... Um, YouTube channel, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, but that is one of the things that we have done. We've made sure that we, uh, we've got this wonderful uh, production for people to take a look at. It's a head nod and a, and a love letter for the people that have supported us over the years. Um, and it is an introduction to people that are uninitiated. So uh, that was shown last night, and it can still be seen on our website, fiveartistsonelove.com, and other social media platforms. And the other thing that we're doing, obviously, is this fantastic show at the AGA, Black Every Day. Okay, then. So um, for, like you said, the uninitiated, um, mm. we have a video for you. So let's check out last year's promo for the Real Film Noir, film noir. that was the name of the show and the performance yeah. that was going on last year. And we have a little video for you all to watch. Check it out. Groovy. Sometimes I forget how amazing <laughs> these events are. <laughs> like, honestly, I was just watching on my cell phone the other day, the last event that we had at Allard last year and how everyone was singing End of the Road in the green room. Um, yeah, probably and one of my, my the favorite last moments. Time, and I'm sure people that are watching right now remember that moment mm. and the moment on stage when everyone grabbed their cell phones and everyone was on stage. You know, that was the very last time we could have a big event like that. 
Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's that moment has been brought up so many times. It's been uh, sent through social media and several conversations have been had about it because it does mark, as you said, the last time that um, a lot of our community were together for for, for that time. And after that, it was uh, COVID hit and um, all the restrictions right. fell into place. So it was a really special moment for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Natalie. Yes. Can I ask you a question? You sure can. <laughs> okay. Can you can you take a moment and explain to us uh, the art show? Uh, who are the artists? Where are they from? Uh, how do we choose them? What's our process? You bet. Uh, so this part is um, obviously the reason why we're here today is the art show. So Five Artists, One Love um, typically will select uh, five local artists um, of Black and African Caribbean descent, and we will feature them in the art gallery, um, the Art Gallery of Alberta, to really celebrate their work um, and the process that they've had to to get to this to this point. So, uh, typically, over the first few years, uh, you guys were in a bunch of different smaller venues, and I believe it was the fifth year, correct, that you were approached by the AGA. Yeah, so we were, we were, um, our home was the two gallery, which was right. a, a gallery on 124th. And that's where we were for, for five years. Right. And on the fifth year, uh, the, um, the director at the time, Gilles Hebert, he was the director of the AGA, just happened to come to one of our shows. And he looked around and he, I think one of the things that stood out for him was the cultural diversity that filled the room. And mm -hmm. the it was almost a palpable energy that was there. And after the show, he he said, "Well, where he's new to Edmonton, he was like, where are all these people from?'" And um, and that was the beginning of a really positive relationship. He basically opened the doors for us to uh, get into the uh, the community gallery at the AGA, um, and then uh, that was the beginning of our relationship uh, with that organization. So that was a giant door, obviously, that he opened for you. Um, mm -hmm. So typically we're in the community gallery uh, down on a lower level up yep. until this year. So if you guys are not aware, uh, we have been very blessed to be able to move up to the second level main gallery. Um, and this, this year for the 15 year anniversary, uh, we have a collaborative partnership with the AGA. So we're working hand in hand together uh, to make this a really outstanding exhibit. Um, typically we have, like I had said, five artists uh, mm -hmm. that we showcase. And so this is the third alumni event that we've had over the 15 years. So to celebrate the anniversary, uh, it is a retrospective year. So we selected 15 artists who have played an integral role in the growth of Five Artists, One Love. So all alumni artists that we had over the past 15 years, we've selected 15 of them. Um, there were so many to choose from. It was yeah. really, really difficult to be able yeah. to, to pick those 15 artists. Um, yeah, we were back and forth and some of it had to do with availability and whatnot. And some people have moved out of the city. Um, however, you know, unfortunately we only have a limited amount of space in the gallery. So had we had, you know, the entire AGA to work with, we could have probably invited uh, so more. many more. But yeah, right, Darren. Yeah. So absolutely. So I'll just quickly go over a little bit about the process of how we normally would select artists for five artists one love. So on a regular year, um, we would do an open call, usually around the fall time, um, and ask for artists of Black descent, so African Caribbean. Um, to submit their work to us um, for review. And basically we would get together as a team, the Five Artists One Love team, kind of go through the submissions, see what was the right fit, see which artists maybe uh, were ready to be showcased in the art gallery. And then we would uh, submit a proposal to them to uh, be part of the show. Uh, my job as artistic director, um, I had actually really big boots to fill because Monique over there who was like a force of nature. That's right, right? And so the only reason why I actually have this position now is because she moved away to our southern city, Calgary. 
I still um, don't know why. We don't understand yeah, why. Yeah, right? <laughs> Maybe it's the Chinooks <laughs> or something. <laughs> so the spot here, we needed somebody local. So Darren Jordan uh, graciously invited me to be part of it. Of course, I was very honored to do so. So my job and Monique's job previously was basically to work with these artists prepare them for an exhibit, kind of walk them through the steps if they weren't really aware of, you know, how to showcase their work, how to have it, um, you know, ready, gallery ready, um, and just kind of guide them. So, you know, over the last couple of years, I've had some artists ask, you know, what should I paint? What should I do? What kind of framing should I get? You know, um, how do I prepare for this? So those are my role, as of my role for artistic director, those are my uh, responsibilities to help them to get ready and experience the best um, experience that they can to be able to showcase in such a phenomenal gallery. Um, Natalie, can, can I just jump in for a moment? Yeah. Certainly. So from uh, from its inception, one of the things that uh, one of our mandates was we wanted to not only give uh, Black artists an opportunity to show their work, uh, but mm -hmm. we also wanted to put them in a position where they could learn how to nurture um, their uh, relationships with gallery owners, uh, learn how to price their work, sell their work, and, and establish uh, connections and networks with uh, other Black artists. That's right. Thank you for to, that. Sorry I, had, sorry, I had to throw that in. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> You've been doing this a little longer than me. <laughs> Um, so another thing uh, that we typically do on an average year is we have what's called the wall. So yes. the wall is really an exciting um, component of Five Artists, One Love. Um, typically, we do an open call again for the wall, um, but this one is not tethered to um, being a Black artist. It could be anyone. Uh, any ethnicity was available to submit for this. Uh, there's always a common theme. So the common themes would vary each year. We would get together as a collective and sort of figure out, you know, what's the current affairs happening, or maybe there's something a little bit, uh, you know, I don't know, something we wanted to address. Um, when I first started, I really wanted to get into the show, but obviously being of Indonesian heritage, I- We, we still love you. <laughs> Thank love you. you. Love you guys. Um, but yeah, so I got to submit uh, by being part of the wall. So it was a 12 by 12 inch gallery canvas. Uh, everything is very uniform. Um, you know, it was, it's an exciting part to be a part of the wall. Um, again, you don't have to be a professional artist. Anybody, there's a picture of the wall right there. Mm -hmm. Darren, what was the theme of that one? Do you remember? That one was... Let's see Martin Luther King in there. God's soul. God's soul. Maybe, okay. maybe that was the one. God's soul. So unfortunately this year, um, with it being the alumni retrospective show, we were unable to accommodate a wall. Uh, however, I'm sure that will be back next year. Oh, indeed. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. So for the 15th year anniversary of Five Honors One Love, just to kind of give you a little bit of um, the differences between a uh, regular year to this particular year, um, usually the show, as Darren and Monique have both said, uh, it's typically Black History Month, which is in February. Um, so the year, this year, sorry, the title is Black Every Day, which kind of coincides with the fact that it's not just Black History Month where these artists should be recognized, it's every yep. day. Yep. Um, so did you, it's falling outside of Black History Month. So hopefully we'll have it by the end of March uh, is supposed to run March 6th to June 6th, but again, because of COVID, uh, the darn COVID needs to go away. Uh, we've had to shift I'm ready. it and go with yeah, I'm ready. Level, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, did you want to say something about that, Darren? About the art show? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'll, what I would say is that um, the, the, the the art show has a few elements uh, to it. It's, it's a, a fairly layered um, mm -hmm. exhibit, um, and when you go, it's it's just that you'll see it's a uh, it's an, an immersive um, uh, story that's being told. Uh, but one of the things I want to talk about is that uh, it does acknowledge the fact that right now uh, we all know, we all see it, we all feel it that there is this uh, global 
global movement towards combating racism uh, towards black people, uh, which is which is which is good. Um, so it has potential to bring about positive change, and I think we all acknowledge that. Uh, but the, the conversations that are going on in in black homes are: uh, is this a trend? Is it a trend? And I think one of the things about the show is that we're talking uh, to the fact that being black is is not a trend. Mm-hmm. It's not a trend, um, and we we're certainly hoping that uh, these changes that have been coming about uh, continue. Uh, but in order for them to to be meaningful, there's got to be some sort of um, sustainability of that change. So uh, right. that's one that's one of the many things that the uh, the art show uh, acknowledges as well. And that you know we don't stop being black in you know after Black History Month. We're we're black right. every day. So <laughs> which okay. the title obviously is very fitting and a lot yeah. more mean, meaningful than you probably would think at first glance, but. Um, if I may, I would just like to quickly introduce our 15 artists. If you guys have not yes. seen the poster, please look at the poster. You can find it on our website. You can find it on social media. You can find it on the AGA website. Uh, Planet Sound made this incredible poster. Uh, it has the, the images of all of our 15 artists. I'm just going to quickly list off the names. Um, hopefully, I don't miss anybody. But So we've got Braxton oh, Center. not. <laughs> I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> so we've got Braxton Santiago Garneau, Renice Boudin, uh, Emily Shouten, Shaheem Small, Judy Robinson, Holly McCurcher, Keon Courtney, uh, Shoko Caesar, Richard Lipscomb, Lisa Mays, uh, Ash Shumba, Betsum Teclamarian, uh, and Jay Dante. And then if you guys have kind of been following these other two artists on their social media. We are very excited to have two of the best muralists in Western Canada. We've Mm -hmm. got Trevor Curly Peters and of course, Mr. AJ Loudon, who I'm sure all of you guys know. Uh, They have been um, this week very busy installing two gigantic murals in this exhibit. I get goosebumps every time I think of this. I saw on Trevor's story this morning that he was in there with Annalisa, you know, kind of doing some last minute work there. Uh, Mm -hmm. And AJ had some prep stuff in his stories last week. So two giant murals plus all of this incredible, amazing artwork. Uh, We have a whole bunch of different mediums here this year. We've got visual artists. We have a photographer. I'm getting goosebumps right now. We have (laughs) sculptors, the sculptors. Like, yeah, it's just, you can't even describe just looking at the sample work that they have submitted. when you guys walk into this exhibit, honestly, I think it's going to be overwhelming. You might want to come a couple times. Uh, the install is happening right now yeah. for the murals. And next week, I will be on site to uh, kind of check out a little bit more of the install of the fine art. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to show any sneak peeks. Uh, I might give a little corner of something here and there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see. I don't really want to ruin it because these artists have been working incredibly hard and the work that they've submitted is really, really out of this world. Um, wow. Most of our artists here are local. Um, we do have Lisa Mays, who has joined us from Montreal. Uh, so she's way out on the East Coast, um, but her work has also been shown out here uh, at the museum. So you guys will really want to you know, come down when the AJ is open and safe for us to do so, uh, to come and look at all of this work. Um, we also do have a few artists here that are uh, Amber Valley settlers. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, like we have so many just incredible people uh, part, as part of this show. So um, really excited for you guys to see it. Really can't wait for you guys to be able to walk into there and, and just get the vibe, even though it's not the vibe of, you know, being our, our person, our uh, show as normal. It's a it's normal, different yeah. vibe. I think, like historically, it's going to be overwhelming, um, you know, for many of us to walk into the to the show and, and just feel all the culture and the heritage and uh, the expertise and you know 
the emotion that all of this artwork evokes. So I am very excited. I know that you guys are excited. Hopefully everybody that's watching is also excited. Um, the other thing that is really cool about the show this year is Planet Sound throughout the whole COVID thing somehow made this work <laughs> with mm -hmm. all of the protocols and whatnot. Uh, they interviewed almost all of our artists who were available to come down to the studio following, of course, all the protocols. Um, and they were interviewed by RJ and his wife, Rowena. Um, they were asked a series of questions and we've made this, or they have made this really incredible seven minute video um, of all of our artists. So I'm sure some of you guys have seen the teasers online there and it uh, looks like we're going to it right now. So check this out. Fantastic. Black Every Day is basically just, you know, trying to live up to the expectations of the great people that came before me and, you know, push the boundary for the people that come come after me. Especially in Canada, I guess people can kind of think black is just one thing. So having 15, 15 different versions of black just shows that, like, black is who you are, who you are, not what you are. Everything, if you see, is between black and white, all the colors, you know. We can say the color or we can say the colors is because of, you know, the revelation of the light. Light is knowledge for me. It takes a community to represent the diversity that is blackness. Um, so I'm grateful to be a part of that community. Art is very personal. And I hope people who go through this exhibition will get a little bit of that emotion. Come be a part of it and see what we have to offer. Don't be afraid of it ask questions and we are for the most part doing that with art and with culture and with media so if everyone comes out and takes take a look at the experiences of all these artists there are beautiful artists right here the art there is representing voices of people in their communities and voices that aren't often at the forefront of a lot of storytelling i really want this to be a celebration of the culture of hip-hop and the mentoring and the knowledge that i've i've received it is significant to be a person of color in this day and age and i want people to walk away from the exhibit knowing that so i feel like these opportunities is a great opportunity to insert ourselves into the conversation because if we don't speak for ourselves other people will try to speak for us now i feel famous <laughs>I'm really excited to hear you guys' feedback on that video. <laughs> uh, again, that's just the teaser, um, and that doesn't showcase all of our artists, but it gives you a little bit of a glimpse into what the video is about and um, just a little bit about what each of these artists will be showing at the ex exhibition. Um, the full one will be played at the exhibit. So if you guys are able to go down there, it's a seven minute long video. Please, for sure, you know, take a few moments just to kind of see what everybody has to say. It's really intriguing to, to hear their answers to some of these questions. Um, and it gives you a little bit more insight into who all of these artists are. Can so, I just make a comment on what yeah. I just saw? So it just it just reminded me, uh, Natalie, of another thing that we're trying to achieve with this uh with this black everyday exhibit. And that is um acknowledging the fact that. The black community is not this homogenous entity. It's a, a complex, diverse uh, pattern within a tapestry. And so the, the, the man that the 25 year old that was born in Nigeria uh, may have a similar melanin account to the, the 25 year old black man born in London, uh, but there's, there's some significant differences culturally. And uh, rather than seeing those differences as something pejorative we see it as something really positive and so we want to highlight that uh that we are um we are a diverse and uh, complex uh community and uh just looking at the lineup of the people that are in the actual show um is a really good example of that that's right i agree um, I, so love I, told, that. I told you I have a tendency to go on. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's good. I, I mean, this is this is your baby, right? I want oh, you. To, I want people to feel 
feel what you feel. Like yeah. these things. I think people that have been to the show before understand like where our excitement comes from because yeah. being in that room with those artists and other creatives and just all the culture and the emotion that happens during these events. Unfortunately, again, it's different. We've had to shift it this year a little bit, yes, which yes. you know is unfortunate since it is such a huge anniversary and a rest- retrospective year for five artists. But um, at the same time, I think that we can still feel it through mm. you know these types of mediums, like these videos, like RJ and Rowena did an outstanding job uh, yeah. with our artists. And I think our artists really had fun you know, doing these interviews and, and, and taking these headshots and whatnot. So um, I love that video. I love our artists. I'm really excited again for everybody to see, you know, um, what they've created for the show. Um, one thing I did want to quickly ask you, Darren, is uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, why is Five Artists One Love important to the community? I think um, a lot of people see us as like an annual show with the music and an art component, but um, they might not see like the community aspect of what the organization is about. Uh, So maybe if you can just kind of touch on that part. Certainly. Um, For one thing, what it does is it brings us together. Uh, It brings us together. And I I mentioned how we have that, um, that, that pattern within this tapestry. And uh, so there, there are many different elements, many different groups. And during Five Artists, One Love, um, it, when you walk into the room, it feels like a party at the UN. Uh, we have uh, right. people <laughs> representing various uh, cultures and communities and uh, specifically various communities within the black community. So the fact that they're actually, we're all, we're all together, we're all celebrating uh, black excellence and artistry in Edmonton um, is a part of it. The other thing is, I think, uh, Shaheem had mentioned during his interview the importance of um, black artists being able to tell their stories um, and, and the truth in the fact that if if we don't tell our stories, other people will. And when other people have, historically, sorry? It was, that was such a powerful statement. A very powerful <laughs> statement. And I mean, historically, when other people have uh, told our stories, uh, those that have heard it, heard it have been left wanting. Um, it's it's definitely short of the whole picture. So who better to tell our stories than than us? And I truly see um, artists as being the custodians of culture, um, visual artists, performing artists. Um, this is how we communicate. This is how we share our culture. And so uh, Five Artists, One Love is, is a conduit for that. Uh, and it's the universal language. You don't have to speak the language to understand what they're saying, right? You don't need to speak English or anything. That's uh, right. If you walk into that show, um, the the work that is in front of you will speak to you. Mm-hmm. If you walk into the performances, what you see will speak to you. It'll edify your soul. The other mm-hmm. thing that happens is it also it also pushes uh, any conversation of relevance forward. Uh, there are a lot of things that we should be talking about amongst ourselves within our community and with allies and other other communities as well. Um, and it's a safe uh, environment to do that, to ask questions, uh, to learn about each other. I've always felt that it's hard to hate somebody and pro- promote hatred uh, towards people that you know and understand and you've spent time with and learned about their culture or broke bread or been entertained together. And so right. again, I know one of the things that we're trying to uh, we're trying to accomplish with this with this event. Excellent. Thank you. Um, speaking a little bit more on community involvement, Monique, I know that you have a few things to say about that. Um, if I can ask for 2020 for 2021, uh, Black Every Day. How does Five Artists One Love fit into Black History Month programming and beyond? Um, as we all know, like, and I'm sure a majority of our audience can testify to this, there's some so-called, you know, traditional Black History Month events that are a little bit more heavy on, um, you know, current events in a situation of, you know, a lecturing situation or some scholarly events, which are all awesome and I enjoy them all. Um, Five Artists, One Love is basically looking at celebrating 
our artists and celebrating mm -hmm. black culture and black communities. And one of the main things we like to focus on is community building, um, community celebration, community exploration. And clearly for us, our focus is on the black arts community. Um, mm -hmm. We do so in the ways that you guys have mentioned already. I'm gonna keep it short because we're running out of time. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have a different list in front of me. But basically, you know, we you know we help our artists, we support our artists. We you know we talked about um, how we work with emerging artists and veteran artists to support them and help them you know gain some experience in different galleries, big and small. We work with a lot of satellite galleries, contemporary galleries. We expose them to different curatorial staff, it's different um, ways of running institutions. Some of the places we've been have been um, artist-run centers, which is way different than an al you know a provincial museum or a provincial or a mm -hmm. city. A shout Alberta. out to the Scott Gallery as well. You know, right. Scott yeah. Gallery, big ups. You know, um, big up. latitude. Latitude. Latitude, yeah. You know, all these places that we bring in there. Even into the Princess Theater, I was in there hanging oh, stuff that's up. Right. It was, that's it was right. wild. I was so scared yeah. that people were going to rob it. Like, it was crazy. But, you know, <laughs> we've been all we, over the we place. We did okay. We did okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all that, you know, artists like handing me, you know, paintings behind the like, you know, theater doors. And they're like, what's going on? I'm like, go to the back door. Don't worry about it. You know, so <laughs> we're exposing them to all these things. And we're also doing a lot of networking not only just the artists are networking together, um, the community is networking. If you go to a lot of um, Black History Month events, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, man, that was that was it. I thought about what I was going to wear for a month. And you'd see all the other kids from across town, and you and you did not show up with ashy. You did not show up looking Joe ashy. ashy skin. You, no, no. No, man. Your parents, they dressed you to the nines. They you know, got you and your sister those matching outfits. Everybody matched, and we all yeah. showed up. And so yeah. this is another way for us to have an event where we build that community. So it's, you know, we're doing all that and we don't turn any artists away because of their type of art. You know, we have paintings, industrial designers, we have mm -hmm. printmakers, etchings, graffiti, muralists, sculpture. We even had textile arts, which is something I nerd out about. Yes, yeah. But yeah. we had a textile artist and I wasn't there for it. So it was a little, whatever, I missed out, that's my fault. But, you know, we still haven't had any performance artists. Who knows what's going to happen? But, you know, we've also had a lot of collaborations that have come out. And, yes. you know, dare I yeah. say, maybe a couple of babies have come out of Five Artists for Love. 100%. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Some, some dare to know about that. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Relationships. But, you know, so it's a valuable experience. Love. It's a valuable experience, and it adds to the fabric of the yeah. quilt that we sew as the black community. The tapestry. Want to say. Well said, point well is, that's said. the word, tapestry, yes. We're adding to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I, guess oh and I also have one more thing to say yeah. too. I have one more thing to say. Um, we choose to participate in Black History Month through the arts because it shines a light on who we are and yes. creates a possibility for change in a different venue. Because you know what, I could lecture all day. We Anybody who knows me knows I can do this. Oh, but yeah. you know what, this is a no, nicer, a little bit more PC way. And it, it you know, involves imagination and creativity. Awesome. Oh man, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh we only have like answer commitment to community as well then. It's, you kind of all put it all together and into the same. Uh, this description, I think, the commitment that Five Artists One Love has in the community. So I guess with that being said, we've got, what, 10 minutes left? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know, Lindsay, if anyone has put any questions in the chat. Oh. I haven't really been monitoring that at all. Um, so far, not really any questions. Um, Lots of encouraging comments awesome. about how great you are. And uh, that my mom? That's my mom. Well, I do have, time. we have some fun questions we could ask ourselves, I guess. I have one fun question. If anybody Is everybody wearing pants? What are you wearing underneath? Are you all just wearing nice shirts? Anybody wearing pants? 100%, yeah, I, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Sweats, but I, good sweats. Oh. Quality Might sweats. Know the only nudist? <laughs> no, no. The party's upstairs. Uh, at, uh, All right. 
Yeah, it doesn't, nobody's willing to stand up to prove yeah, that. Certainly no, not. no, no, you don't need to see what's going on down there. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have a question for all of you. Okay, so uh, the wall is uh, is one of, I think it's one of our favorite oh, parts yes. of the show because um, mm. it's so inclusive and you have so many people sounding off um, on what the topics are. And the topics in the past have been things like civil rights movement, got soul, take a knee, black, black lives matter, matter um, a number of them. What? What was the one last year? Do you remember what the one last year was? Does anybody remember? Was it taking me? Was it Afrofuturism? Afrofuturism. Yeah. I'll look at you. Afrofuturism. My Black question Girl to Magic you. For, for two what? years ago. Sorry? Black Girl Magic? Yeah. Black Girl Magic, yes. Two years Black or three Magic. years? Two, uh, two years. years. So my okay. question to you, panel, is if we did have the wall, what would you title it? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I got a couple. <laughs> you always have good ones, Darren. I'm not good at this. Oh, Given well. what people went through during <laughs> 2020, oh. and who knows what we're going through in 2021. What do you think your, uh, what do you think your, hmm. your title would be? Oh, I have, I have one that I've just been explode. Ex like a swear word in cartoon letters. Okay. <laughs> that would just be it. That's, and that, that would be, be like, you know, okay. people okay. just come okay. up with whatever because everybody's all sorts of madness going on. So okay. I'm sure we'll get like, we'd get so many good things from that or, you know. Okay. I feel I'll like get, can I, Darren's sorry. ready to share. Okay. I'm sure Darren's what. ready to share. I, got, share I, got, I have two in mind. Number one right. would be 2020 dot 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 WTF. Exclamation mark. <laughs> that's question. Well, okay. that's, <laughs> that, that, I'm not even joking. That might have been, that might have been what it was. Uh, the other one is uh, 2021, how bad could it be? Yeah. And the other one, which I would, I would, I would credit my wife for this. Uh, hindsight is 2020. Yeah. I just dropped the microphone and right like, there. <laughs> that was a bit cliche because I That's feel like people probably have said that before. Never I, been said. Yeah, but yes, Darren is Google, it's never been said. <laughs> Again, that happened just here. Right on your parade or anything. Oh, so we have some, some, some questions that are coming in. Oh, great. Um, great. This, uh, this is a great one. Uh, what is your biggest goal or dream um, for five artists, one love for the future? Darren. Wow. Okay. Um, to have a, well, I, there's a few things to have. Uh, it's over here. Are you guys? Sorry? It's still alive and what? Yeah, let's see. You're, uh, I, you're a robot right now. I am? No, no, money. Okay. Uh, I think uh, th we have a few goals. Um, one is uh, going forward to fortify this relationship that we have with the AGA and uh, other prominent galleries in the city so that um, annually there's a recognizable home for, for us to, uh, to display our work. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is um, we need to get it to the point where we have sustainability. Um, it, we've been doing this for 15 years, and I think that bodes well. Um, but, you know, I think going forward, establishing some really solid partnerships with, uh, with organizations and other communities um, will help us uh, maintain, or well, no, establish that, that notion of, of sustainability that we're here, that we're moving forward. and. Um, I would say thus far the trajectory has been uh, moving in that direction for sure. But what about what about you, ladies? You have thoughts? I mean, that's one of those things I could go on for like an hour about. So I'm being very Honestly, conservative right now. I can tell you w one of mine, but it's it's pretty big. Is that you're going <laughs> to take the show and we're going to go like on the road. So either it be international. Or like across Canada tour, yeah. Darren. Yeah, I, that's actually, uh, yeah. I could do a traveling exhibit. Like it would. You be, can consult me. I'll write it up. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's already started. Okay, yeah. next question, or Monique, did you want to put in your? Oh, oh, my three cents about the future. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it'd be really good to a like a traveling exhibit would be awesome, but I think maybe the traveling exhibit could be. Um, an art class that travels to schools to teach children because oh, one of the yeah. most touching things I have heard during my time 
is how we affected a young girl who was being treated unfairly by her classmates due to her race. And she was feeling down and out about herself and not believing in herself. And she saw our artwork that mm. we put up in a space yeah. out at Augustana campus. It was the librarian's niece right. who's adopted. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And this little girl in a community of people who didn't look like her um, saw that she could do this kind of art and saw like the power in it and the beauty in it and it made her feel better about herself. So if we can do that for one child and that mm -hmm. like, you know, made, made me tear. So if we yeah. can do that for other children, like yes. I've been in the art gallery, AGA and I've seen classes come through cause I was like, you know, skipping away on my lunch hour, but clean, you know, and I saw the little kids come through and I felt so honored and, you know, happy that these children were um, seeing things that I couldn't see when I was growing up. I was just like, black people paint, they do? Yeah. Besides walls, they don't just paint walls. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it's education. I think if we could Indeed. find and artists I, I on the road agree. to schools. And that, also, I know Natalie art teaches arts. Natalie teaches to kids, so you know we already got teacher ready, ready to go over there and just let's roll it out. I love it. Honestly, teaching the children like uh, through the Africa Center and through um, Make Paint Dance and a couple of other different uh, channels, um, these children are really resilient. And to to see what they can create in you know in one or two hour time span, um, and to see their faces sort of light up, it is like the biggest reward. Uh, to myself, uh, you know, and I think also to these children. So, um, you know, with all the workshops and stuff that are going on at the AGA, like, yeah, maybe we could do that. Maybe we can even get one of our artists or a couple of our artists be the instructors for these, you know, like, there's so many things. <laughs> okay, next question, just because I know we're running out of time. <laughs> sure. yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, so, so Mike is asking about a, a group rate um and i can answer that oh, um and specifically for u of a uh students um mm. have been uh reduced rate and free um and so there's going to be no problem to come if you're awesome. U of a students uh when we open to the to the public um of awesome. course so that's no problem um and another question um which maybe um will just be our, our last question to kind of wrap it up. Um, they're asking, um, where do you have the great music party, uh, AGA or uh, any other location? And is it hard to get tickets? I think okay, that's a good a question. Different, but maybe okay. you can kind of expand on that. I'll, I'll, I'll take my that. last comment of the day actually was about the music portion, but you go ahead, Darren. Okay, I'll take it and jump mm -hmm. in if I miss anything. Uh, so traditionally, uh, what happens is we have a uh, we have this music production, and it is um, it's fully immersive. Um, it, it often is themed. It tells stories. So we've explored the barber shops and salons in the black communities, all the way to uh, we had a show called One Night in Harlem, where we looked at all the, uh, the major theories, the Savoy, uh, the Cotton Club, and uh, oh, who's what's a big one? What am I thinking? The Apollo. The Apollo. Motown Apollo. Oh, a lot of mercy. Yeah, the Apollo. So every year it's always it's always themed. Uh, last year we we did uh, we did uh, the real film noir, which is about black films and the music that is tethered to it. Um, there's always a performance, and uh, so we we started at the Yardbird. Uh, we were at um, the the AGA for a while, and then uh, we went to the Citadel. And our home recently has been for the last few years uh, Grant McEwen, um, and so their brand new theater there. Uh, we our, our goal was always to be in, um, it was one day to be in the Windspear. We still we still have sights set on that. Uh, the, the music show is ticketed. Usually costs about $40, or, yeah, thereabouts. Uh, that's a ticketed show. But we've also uh, made sure that students or other people that are not in a position to go for the ticketed show have access to the art and the music. So the AGA has often um, been a place that not only do you come to enjoy uh, the visual arts, but we always have free music, uh, free spoken word, um, and free food. Oh, it's so good. Um, it is this, so year good. Is, this year is different. This year, uh, you will have access to the AGA. Um, the music show, as I said, we, we're not, uh, it's not a ticketed event. We're doing three webisodes, one of which we released last night. And over the next uh, few months, we will release the other two. When we get back to normal, 
uh, we will be having, again, the art show, which will already have uh, built-in music and performances, because uh, Lindsay and I were talking about what a party this would have been if we, if it was normal times. The space that we're using is absolutely beautiful and inducive to uh, a wonderful group uh, of people having a good time. So we'll see what happens for next year. But for this and if year, I can just quickly jump in, everybody, if you can please um, follow or I guess subscribe to the newsletter for Five Artists One Love on the website, which is the number five artists, the number one love dot com. Yeah. as well as on Instagram, follow Five Artists One Love, Planet Sound, uh, myself, Inda by Natalie, Darren Jordan is Jordan underscore Darren. Monique, I don't know if you're, your Instagram. Oh, I'm I'm a hermit, so that's okay. okay. But you should also follow <laughs> YouTube, cover. and cover. you can check out that YouTube, video. Subscribe to the channel, and of course, your AGA. Uh, so you can get all the updates in regard to uh, the, web and, uh, the webisodes for the music portion. We don't have the dates yet. Uh, for the next two um, but if you check out the website um, today i think it's today you'll be able to see the one that was released yesterday and that's the music portion um, featuring of course jeff hendrick and steffi french and a whole bunch of other incredible artists please oh, yeah, follow really us fun. for announcements um thank you planet sound for running all of that stuff outstanding job of course for one and rj thank you for that uh, Darren, anything else? Looks like we're at the end of the, the road here. I was uh, end of the road. <laughs> Very good. Um, yes, I saw what you did there. We saw what yeah, you did. She brought that around. Uh, when yeah. you, uh, once you watch the webisode, uh, people, that last comment will make a lot more sense. Um, yes. I would just also, again, just like to highlight the fact that um, we, uh, we're we very community-minded, and we have brought um, Autism Edmonton under our, our wing, and we have partnered with them. Uh, again, uh, the, the, the notion of the work that they do uh, in the community uh, with families and, and individuals that are, um, are touched by autism, uh, their work is uh, amazing. Uh, you can actually donate to, to them at uh, info at autismedmonton.org. Uh, it's also on our website. Uh, but again, it's not, this isn't just about you know, enjoying ourselves. We are enjoying ourselves, but we also want to put back into the community. And, uh, and and support people that need our support. So if you have an opportunity to follow up on that, that will be fantastic. Um, otherwise, thank you. What an absolute delight this has been, Lindsay. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lindsay. Thank, thank, you. Lindsay. thank, thank you. you, Art Gallery. Thank you, Helen, Planet Sound, TD, TD Bank Group. Um, who else? Edmonton Arts Council. Edmonton Arts Edmonton Council. Community Foundation. Yeah. Yes. NBCC. And oh, yes. yes, yes, and That's everyone that is watching, thank you for tuning in today. Mm -hmm. And watch out for this summer, we may have some special music surprises, so keep your eyes peeled outside of winter. <sighs> I would say one last thing that Ed <laughs> Ali, one other five webinar. artists, five artists yes. one now has a foothold in the uh, Edmonton Jazz Festival for the first yes. time. So, there's, that's, that's a whole other story. Perhaps we'll get another webisode for that. Yes. Subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for announcements. Yes, stay tuned lots for of things to look for. Thank you. That's right. Yes. Thank you all so much. Um, we're so excited for the show and can't wait until we can open again. Thanks. Yeah. And thank Thanks you, AGA, for, for being so flexible and awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.